you're entering another dimension beyond any limits known to man. This is the universe of imagination, a wondrous land of brave new stories from the far reaches of space and time. So fasten your seatbelt. There's the signpost up ahead. Your next stop, the Twilight Zone. Starlight Magazine. I'm sorry, Mr. Harris hasn't come in yet. Would you care to leave a message? Oh, hi, Christine. Lunch at the Cock and Bull? Twelve o'clock. I'll remind him. Paula? Yes? Did you proof the feature story yet? Give me 20 minutes. Make it 10. I need to double-check the whole issue before pickup. Where's the center spread art? Nate's got it. Why isn't he here? He called a little while ago. He's stuck in traffic or something. <laughs> well, he can just get himself unstuck. If we miss deadline again... Rennie! Yo! How's the cover coming? Printing it out right now. Good. Don, did you finish the insert? What insert? The new line from Lady Lindbrook. I never saw it. They sent camera-ready copy yesterday. I'll have to repaginate everything. Then do it. They're a huge account. <sighs> okay, boss. And Rennie, add a teaser on the cover. Free inside a sample of Tempest Fugit. That's the name of the perfume. Will it fit? Uh, I guess it'll have to. That should be everything, uh, except for the color separations. I'm sure Nate's on his way. I'm sure he better find another job. We need him, Cheryl. He's our graphics coordinator. Oh, I can hire interns who will do it for nothing. Oh, well, how well would they do it? You have to admit his work is good, and it makes us money. It's the camera-ready ads that make us money. All the rest is filler. Call the messenger service and reschedule. When's the last pickup? One o'clock. Tell them we're running late. Maybe they can stretch it. I'll try. Uh, sorry. I got hung up. Hi, Nate. Do you realize how long you've kept this staff waiting? Oh, what time is it? Uh, my watch isn't working. Your watch is not alone. Uh, you won't believe what happened. I stayed up all night to redo the art. Then the car wouldn't start, so I called the repair shop. You could have called a cab. It took 45 minutes for a jump start. Then, when I finally got here, the elevator quit and I was stuck between floors. I know I said I'd be here an hour ago. Make that, too. But it's not my fault, I swear. You can't beat the clock. The harder you try... Did you bring the disc? It's right here. Load it and print it. You can have your nervous breakdown after we go to press. Here, use my computer. What's the matter with her this morning? Another day in the cackle factory. Look at this first so I can sign off on it. What page? Center spread the feature story. At night, our fair city glitters like the proverbial Christmas tree. Who wrote this track? Our beloved managing editor. Shirley thinks she's a writer now. That's because she won't pay real writers. Whose phone is that? At least put it on vibrate. Hello? Oh, hi, Chris. Oh, she called before. About lunch. Yeah, we're still on... I'll be there, I promise. No cell phones in the office. It's Christine. Tell her you'll call her back. Honey, I'm here. Listen, we're on deadline. Now! now. This is a bad time. Can we talk about it later? Give it to me. <clears throat> what did you do that for? So you won't have any distractions. Get back to work. You know what, Shirley? I don't need this. That makes two of us. I'm out of here. You can mail my last check. Don't let the door hit you on the way out. Yeah, box up all my stuff and leave it with Paul. If I have the time. Right now, some of us have a magazine to put out. Introducing Mr. Nathaniel Harris, former fine arts major, engaged to Miss Christine Crosley, and lately employed at a small publishing company. Very lately. Because this is a man whose hourglass has finally run out. He just learned one very important lesson, that he can't be in two places at once. But consider, how different might his life be were there but world enough and time? Every question deserves a response, and this one is about to be answered in the Twilight Zone. And now, the Twilight Zone, and our story, The 25th Hour, starring Mike Nussbaum with Stacey Keach as your narrator. 
Any dessert today? Just coffee and a check. Very good. Now, what time is it? Mr. Harris, nice to see you. I have a reservation for noon. That clock, it can't be right. 1 p.m. exactly. Oh, no. Is she... Table four. Chris, you're still here. Where else would I be? Lunch takes an hour, plus or minus a few minutes. I've done my duty. I am so sorry. Did you order yet? If I wanted lunch for one, I'd have stayed home. Honey, it was a deadline day. Not only that... It's but... always something, isn't it? You shouldn't make dates you can't keep. It won't happen again. You're right. It won't. Two glasses of rosé. Compliments of the house. Oh, thanks, Frederick. Chris, the editor's been impossible to deal with. Today, she actually smashed my cell phone. Can you believe it? So I told her... Care to see a menu? Uh, sure. Uh, I, I stood up and I said... Need a few more minutes? Uh, please. Very good. Anyway, I told her what she could do with her job. Ask Paula. She was there. We should drink a toast. Great idea. To... Old acquaintance. What? It's about time, Nate. You never have any left over for me. What are you talking about? Don't worry. I'm not bitter. Chris. We need a break. From each other. Who knows? Maybe it's true what they say on greeting cards. If you love something, let it go. If it comes back, it's yours to keep. Chris, listen. Goodbye, Nate. I'm trying to tell you... It's all right. Think of how much more time you'll have now. To tell you that I won't ever have to go back to that miserable job again. For you, sir. I didn't order it. From the gentleman. He thought you might like something stronger. Which gentleman? The corner booth. The old guy in the brown suit? Yes, sir. He's one of our regulars. Oh, why not? Very good. Thanks. My pleasure. <laughs> Can I buy you one? Oh, dear me, no. Not necessary in the slightest. Have we met? Not that I recall. Then why the drink? I thought you looked a bit under the weather. Nothing fixes that like a Moscow mule. <laughs> Is that what it's called? Oh, ginger beer and vodka in a copper cup. Their signature drink when I first came here. Mm, of course, that was years ago. <laughs> And Nate Harris, and you are... Uh... Levens is the name. But you can call me whatever you like, so long as you don't call me late for dinner. <laughs> Please, sit, sit down. I think I've seen you here before. Oh, most unlikely. I'm the type who blends in with the woodwork. Well, I wouldn't say that. When a man is my age, he becomes invisible, practically speaking. Perhaps because he's no longer in such a hurry. Then I envy you. Oh, you mustn't. I have nowhere to go and nothing to do, unlike yourself. Actually, I don't know what I'm supposed to do now. Uh, something will present itself. It always does. I saw the way you came in. Your features a blur of energy like hummingbird wings. It's nerves. I haven't had a free minute all day. I was like that once. Oh. But now I have so much time. Well, I don't know what to do with it. Well, you're lucky. Don't be so sure. You have a schedule to keep, a job. Not anymore. Oh, is that right? I was two hours late to work this morning. One time too many. And to top it off, my girl just walked out on me. So I guess I'm flat out of time. Pity. But now you've hit the nail on the head, haven't you? Time. There's an old saying that it's wasted on the young. In fact, it's wasted on people like me. I have all the time in the world. More than I can possibly use. Excess, you might say. Well, if you figure a way to bottle it, let me know. Do you mean that? Are you kidding? I'd pay anything to have a little extra. Anything. Oh, no need for such a sacrifice. That's easy for you to say. If I could have what you have, I'd hock everything I own. I assure you that won't be necessary. No? Let me tell you about myself. As I say, I've reached the point where I have too much time on my hands. That means the opportunity to read, to study, to speculate, and to tinker. What's unimportant falls away, and all that remains is what truly matters. 
What are you getting at? Simply this, Mr. Harris. I'm about to share something that may sound incredible, but it's really quite straightforward, at least in principle. You see, nothing is created or destroyed in the universe. It merely changes form, moves to where it's needed, so to speak. Sometimes that requires a little nudge, of course. I'm not sure I follow. Uh, consider a rain falling on arid land, air flowing into a vacuum. The process is the same. Surplus redistributed to maintain a certain equilibrium. The truth is that nature abhors waste. Now you've lost me. Consider what happens in a typical day. As soon as you have a free hour, new tasks flow in to fill the gap. The result is that a busy man never quite manages to stay ahead of the game. You got that right. But what if you could add another hour? Or another? And another? Until the pressure is drained off, equalized. Tell me, what would you do with that extra time? Travel? Write the great American novel? Use it to get caught up, probably. Ah. I studied to be an artist. Now I'm a consulting graphics coordinator. Do you know what that means? I push ads around on a computer screen. Don't ask me how it happened. No real mystery. You needed to earn a living. And time got in the way. What you need is time that's off the clock, so to say. Before what matters is only a memory. Uh, don't tell me. You're selling a magic potion. What's it called? Time in a bottle? Uh, nothing so fanciful. The product of my tinkering is purely scientific. I happen to have a prototype with me. <laughs> uh, spare me, old timer. Thanks anyway, but I'm afraid I can't afford whatever you're selling. Oh, it's not for sale. It's still in the experimental stage. Oh, come on. I know what that is. I took music lessons. It's a... A variable rate device to mark the passage of time. Allow me to demonstrate. Ah, congratulations. You've reinvented the metronome. <laughs> Try to lift it. <clears throat> That's heavier than it looks. What did you do? Put lead in it? It's quite empty as far as the eye can see. Open the panel in the base. Oh, you, you have to lift the latch. Well, there's nothing inside. Are you sure? A pivot for the arm attaches some kind of bearing, that's all. But it feels like it weighs ten pounds. That's because the little door leads to... Well, I wouldn't want to confuse the issue. Call it a storage chamber. <laughs> oh, it smells like stale air to me. Oh, it hasn't been tested in a while. The contents are flowing out now that the mechanism is activated. What contents? That which is beyond price and invisible to the eye. Go ahead, examine it. There must be a layer of iron under that veneer. Only the thinnest of plywood. Now, where'd you get it? From a magic supply company? It took me years of trial and error. This is the 81st and final model. Or is it the 82nd? Uh, if my calculations are correct, it possesses certain unique properties. Listed on eBay. You'll find a buyer. As I said, it's not for sale. But it is available on loan. What would I do with a thing like that? Put it on my coffee table? Well, I need someone to field test it. Test it? How? To be sure that it's ready. Think of it as a kind of temporal storage battery. Operating on the principle of equalization. I've infused it with some of my time. The excess I told you about. Say you're running late and you need a few extra minutes. Take it out and start a ticking. When you've had enough, one touch stops the arm. <sighs> Wouldn't that be something? <laughs> now, you almost had me going there for a minute. If it were real, you could name your terms. Oh, it's quite real. I suppose you can prove that? If I do, will you agree to a test? Here comes the con. Put it back in the case and take it home. Use it at your discretion. 
All I ask is that you return one week from today and report your experience in detail. And what sort of experience might that be? Why, the natural principle of equalization. It's already begun to work. You asked for proof, hmm? What does the clock on the wall say? Well, I can't see from here. Then feel free to stand up. Check it carefully. I don't have to. It was one on the dot when I got here, so it'll be around uh, a quarter past now, maybe 120. <laughs> my, 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 how time flies. <laughs> What's the matter? Don't you have a watch? Well, that might be part of the trick. Go on, walk over to the clock, take a good look. And what will I see? The principle of equalization at work. Temporal redistribution on demand. Proof positive that my time is now your time. <laughs> You're on. One oh five. Hold on. Frederick? Yes. Did somebody move the hands back? Sir? The wall clock. Did you see anyone go near it? Why, no. Then it's broken. No, sir. It keeps perfect time. Well, let me ask you. How long have I been here? How long? Answer the question. You met Miss Crosley very briefly, then the gentleman sent you a drink. And how long ago was that? A minute or two? Oh, come off it. Did he put you up to this? Who? The little man in the booth, whatever his name is. Blevins? He bought you a drink and departed. Oh, oh, he did, did he? Then why is he... Why is he what, sir? Where'd he go? He was here. We had a conversation about time and, and his theories of... Uh... Did he leave that for you, Mr. Harris? Leave what? The leather case. Perhaps he intended you to have it. What in the... Now, back to the Twilight Zone and our story, The 25th Hour. Hello? Nate? Hey, Paula. Ah, you finally got a new phone. Had to. I've been busy. Ah, you sound out of breath. I'm a morning jog in the park. You? I don't believe it. A man's got to get in shape sometime. Have you found another job yet? I've been going on a lot of interviews, about ten a day. Whoa, <laughs> take it easy. I have all the time I need now. It's like the more I do, the more I can do. <laughs> You'll have to tell me your secret. I could use some of that. So, how's the magazine? down the tubes without me? Well, well, give it time. Listen, Nate, I may have a lead for you. Mandible Publications is looking for a color supervisor. Mandible? Too big for me. They do a dozen titles a month. The pay is double what you made here. No more publishing. Shirley will never give me a recommendation. She doesn't have to. I'll write it. Will you do that? Of course. What are friends for? Which brings me to my next subject. I talked to Christine. Why haven't you called her? The last time I saw her, she told me have a nice life. Do yourself a favor, Nate. Make the call. She's the one who walked out. This is me you're talking to. Remember? I'll think about it. You do that. If you can fit it into your schedule. Well, that's not the point. Huh. Oh, I gotta go. Dragon Light is back from her coffee break. Keep me in the loop about Mandible. Taxi! Over here! Where you headed? Uptown, the Mandible building, and step on it. Sure thing. Hold the elevator! What floor? Ah. Uh, 
the editorial offices. Lucky seven, coming up. I'm here to see the publisher, please. Do you have an appointment? Uh, Nathaniel Harris, 11.30. I'll tell him you're here. Have a seat. Mr. Harris, is it? Oh, thank you. I appreciate your seeing me. I'm on a tight schedule, so let's cut through the fat. You have experience with pre-press. Uh, three years with Starlight over at Maxilla. Be before that, I was a production coordinator for Carcosa Press. Impressive. Paula told you about the position? A color supervisor. What exactly would that entail? Crunch. Pardon? That's what it's all about. I want our colors to pop off the page. Good enough to eat. The question is, how hungry are you, boy? Ah, right on time, Mr. Harris. It works. You seem surprised. Mind if I have a look? Oh. It's undamaged. And uh, the little door above the base? Ah. Ooh, how intoxicating. What is? The scent of movement to and fro. The entire mad rush of life. Live to the fullest. Vitality, passion, and even, ah, ah, the great outdoors, if I'm not mistaken. Well, you can tell all that. The aura of youth is unmistakable. Oh, you've used it a great deal, haven't you? The storage chamber is almost full. Why, well, I only did what you said. Started it ticking when I needed more time. And the result? Well, I got everything done, and then some. Over the last seven days, I've been across town more times. I've gone on more interviews. Oh, have a drink of water. I could use one of those Moscow mules. <laughs> Not a good idea. It might provide too much of a kick in your present condition. The device is extremely potent. You appear to have overdone it several times over. Oh, I'm, I'm a little run down is all. Hmm. With a young man, desire knows no bounds. A kind of greed takes over for life itself. Well, what does it do, exactly? The device. Call it a doorway into the fourth dimension. Within it is stored unused time, which you have been permitted to tap. You're satisfied, I take it? Uh, yes. Excellent. But uh, there's something you haven't told me. What do you get out? Oh, I suppose a certain poetic justice, quid pro quo and all that. From each according to his ability, to each according to his needs. Nature's method of redistribution in its purest form, with a little help from the equalizer. <laughs> Glad to have been of service. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Uh, I don't take it yet. <laughs> you didn't find a job? I start the end of the week. I might need this for backup, just in case. You're sure? Yeah, only in case of an emergency. I promise. Very well. One more week. But heed my warning. Be certain not to overdo it. I'm not responsible for the consequences. think you'd be home tonight. Oh, Nate. What happened to us? I guess... I guess it wasn't all your fault. 
I could have been more patient. That job was killing your soul, wasn't it? The things they made you do, Paula told me. You couldn't help it that there wasn't any time for us. And now you're starting a new job. From the jaws of one bad situation and into the next. It can't be your heart's desire. You deserve more. Did you hear that? Hear what? Christine? Is that you? Uh, I must have dozed off. Why are you here? I thought you might want the key. Well, you, you don't have to do that. I'll leave it on the table. Go back to sleep. Oh, please stay. I can't. But don't. I'll be back. Now sleep. You need your rest. Maybe I'll see you at lunch tomorrow. Our old place? Do you still go there? I'll keep up with you somehow. Until then, good night, my love. Now, Act 3 of The 25th Hour, starring Mike Nussbaum on The Twilight Zone. Hmm. Any chest pains? Uh, no. Your pulse is a little fast. How about headaches? Uh, I wouldn't call it that. What would you call it? I just ache all over. I, I've never been so tired in my life. Uh, look straight ahead. Try not to move your head. Follow my finger with your eyes. I'll do my best. Hmm. Okay, I'm going to switch off the overhead light and shine this directly into your eyes. Now, first one, then the other. You'll see a flash of red. Now, don't worry. It's perfectly normal. Ready? Okay. Okay. I'm turning off the lights. There you go. Now. All right. Wow. What do you see, doctor? Some new broken blood vessels on the retina. Any, any trouble focusing lately? Blurred vision? In the last few days. Hmm. Floating blind spots? Shadows at the edges of your vision? That too. Uh-huh. Hmm. So what's wrong with me? You want it straight or you want it with sugar on it? Uh, I, I, I can take the truth. There's evidence of accelerated macular degeneration. The sort of thing I'd expect to see in a much older man. All since your last checkup. What does it mean? Well, it's hard to say uh, by itself, but it's part of a cluster of symptoms. Slowed reflexes, general weakness. Have you noticed a ringing in your ears? Well, not a ringing, but I do hear something. Not voices, I hope. <sighs> uh, more of a, a throbbing. It feels like a, a pounding in my head. Your blood pressure could be a lot better. So, <clears throat> tell me. What's been happening in your life? I mean, stress on the job? Well, I I had a job. But not anymore. I found a new one. I start this week. <laughs> a big life change, no matter how old we are. Getting enough sleep? Well, as much as I can. Huh, that's a no. You don't leave the window open at night, do you? What? Pale skin. Circles under your eyes. Who'd be a vampire? Like Dracula. Yeah. You know, sucking the life force out of you? That was a joke. I know. Well, something is going on. You're dehydrated. And I don't like the sound of your heart. I'll schedule an EKG in a complete blood panel. When? Right away. This morning. Is that necessary? I'd say so. I thought you could give me a, a B12 shot or something. I could, but it won't address the problem. It was all the running around. There, there was so much I could do with the extra time, but that's going to change from now on. 
extra time. Where do you get that? In a vending machine? Oh, don't ask. You wouldn't believe me anyway. Ready for my speech? Yeah, go ahead. You've been making the most of every day, and that's admirable, but you've stretched it too far. Burn the candle at both ends, and you burn yourself out. You know the old saying, live fast, die young. Is that what you want? Well, I'll, I'll try to slow down. Try? Not good enough. You're exhausted, Nathaniel. After the tests, I want you to go home, take your vitamins, and pull the covers over your head. Eight glasses of water minimum in the next few hours. Now, I'm going to call you when I get the results. Is there someone who can come by and cook you a healthy meal? I'm, I'm not sure. Well, let me know if you feel any worse. And cancel your appointments. Don't even think of going anywhere for the rest of the week. Well, that's not possible. You don't have a choice. The new job. You'll end up in the emergency ward. <sighs> I told you. <laughs> I'll take it slow. Famous last words. That'll have to do. Then I'm going to check you into a hospital room right now. No. I have something to do first. You're not listening. Do you want a myocardial infarction? How about a stroke? Not common at your age, but it can happen. Life or death, Nathaniel. It's up to you. Mr. Harris, are you all right? Oh. Where is he? Let me take that for you. Where? Who, sir? The old man. You mean Blevins? I don't see him. He hasn't come in yet. He's always here this time of day. Would you like to wait at his booth? Just... <sighs> Just give him this. The briefcase? Tell him I couldn't wait. Let me call a cab for you. I, I have to get rid of it. Now. Hey, buddy, watch where you're going. I think there's something wrong with him. I'm sorry. Look, Mommy, sit there. I have to get away. Looks like he's crazy. Uh, far away. Now, what have we got here? I'm drinking, have you? Can you hear it? Move along. You, you do hear it, don't you, officer? Or I'll be running you in for drunk and disorderly. That's the case. You'll have a case, all right, in front of the judge. I lost this, but it won't, it, it won't let me go. On your way. It was, it was you, old man. What are you? Uh, some kind of a, a, a psychic vampire. That's it, isn't it? Dry. Well, I won't let you. I'll, I'll. Well, well. Look at Mr. Businessman. Is it happy hour already? Where is he? I'll tell you where, old man. Just give me your wallet, and I'll tell you. Now, if you just hand it over, we won't have any trouble. Here, you have to help me find him. What? What are you babbling about? You don't understand. He, he has to take it back. What? Uh, are you for real? I mean, what's the matter with you? Stop. Uh, stop. Uh, uh, are you having a fit or something? Make it stop. It hurts. Forget it, you old geezer. I'm, I'm out of here. 
Why, hello, Ms. Crossley. Hi, Frederick. Is Nate here? Mr. Harris? He was, but then... Where did he go? I didn't see, Miss. I, I offered to call a cab. Why? Did he have lunch already? No, Miss. He seemed, uh... Seemed what? Is he coming back? I really can't say. Then I'll wait for him at the table. It needs to be cleared. Oh, take your time. I'm in no hurry. Oh, hiya, Blevins. Freddy, my boy. Didn't mean to be late. So much to do. Oh, do you like my new sport coat? It's the latest style. They call it hot plaid. <laughs> <laughs> I held your booth. Oh, and this is for you. He didn't wait. No, sir. Hello there. Hello. I do believe I recognize you. From where? This very table. You're a friend of Nathaniel's. What a coincidence. So am I. You know Nate? Please, join me. Uh, I'm fine here. Until they clear your table. I insist. Well... I'm sure he'll be along. Besides, I want to show you something. You'll find it quite interesting. Nathaniel did. Just for a minute. Follow me, the corner booth. What's in the case? Something very special. I know what that is. It's a metronome. Are you a musician? <laughs> Looks can be deceiving. This one has a most unusual construction, but I wouldn't want to confuse the issue. What was that? For now, call it a collection chamber. <sighs> it smells of youth, strength, vitality, the most precious commodities in the world. Oh, but you know all about that, don't you? You're young, full of energy. Would you believe I was once so tired of life that I didn't know what to do with my time? Until I invented the equalizer, I've been hoping to find someone to test it. Allow me to demonstrate. A story about a man named Nathaniel. A victim of the adage that it's better to burn out than to rust. Unfortunately, everything has a price. And Mr. Harris learned too late just how steep that price may be. A man whose hourglass ran out to the last grain of sand. But consider, how different might his life have been had he lived it somewhere other than the Twilight Zone. The 25th Hour, starring Mike Nussbaum with Stacey Keach as your narrator, was written for The Twilight Zone by Dennis Etcherson. Heard in the cast were Steve Key, Fernet Lebo, Friedrich Williams, Lisa Wolf, Joby Cerny, Carl Amari, Jim McCants, Patrick Francis, Doug James, Meg Falcon, and Jacob Goldberg. To learn more about The Twilight Zone radio dramas and to download episodes, including six free episodes on our homepage, visit our official website at twilightzoneradio.com. Doug James speaking. KFWB, KFWB HD, Los Angeles. Your home for Clippers basketball. Oh, my 